What is self-regulation? To control ourselves and behave in socially acceptable ways, we use self-regulation. Some social psychologists consider this to be the most important function of the self. As you can imagine, regulating the self requires awareness of the self. Let's take a quick look at how one set of researchers investigated the relationship between self-awareness and self-regulation. They set up candy tables for trick-or-treaters and left a note inviting the kids to take just one piece of candy. On one table with one group of kids, a mirror was positioned on the table so that they had to look at it while choosing their piece of candy from the bowl. On the other table with a different group of kids, no mirror, only candy. What they found was the kids who took candy from the table with the mirror were more likely to follow the rules than the kids from the no mirror condition. When there was no mirror, more than 35% of kids broke the rules. The authors explained that the mirror served to heighten the kids' self-awareness and put them in a better position to regulate their behaviors and follow instructions. The self-regulation process is continuous and the need is constant. When we use it, we weaken it and deplete it, making it more difficult to re-exert self-control. Unfortunately, the process doesn't always work, sometimes we fail to self-regulate. This is more likely to happen when we are tired, stressed, or overwhelmed than when we aren't. In these situations, we may act in ways that are not typical for us. This is one of the reasons why it's important for us to take care of our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health, the very processes that make us human require lots of resources. In the next part of the lecture, you will learn more about the mechanisms involved in enhancing self-esteem and maintaining a positive view of the self.